Hi, good evening everyone. So for this session, we are going to talk about absorption costing versus variable costing. So I have already given you the handouts for this session. Before we begin, I would like to make the following correction. For the first problem, problem A, the number of units expected to be sold will always be 10,000 units. The assumptions under items 1, 2, 3, and 4 are showing the number of units that are expected to be produced rather than sold. Again, in your handouts, please change the word sold into produce. In problem A, we will always expect to sell 10,000 units. And the number of units expected to be produced is what is going to change. Okay? So, please take note of these corrections. What is being shown under each line item, 1, 2, 3, and 4, are the number of units expected to be produced, not sold. Okay? So, let us have a quick recap. We may classify costs according to behavior. That is, costs can be variable, fixed, mix, or step cost. This time, we're going to classify costs on the basis of function. According to function, costs can either be product cost, period cost. Again, according to function, Cost can either be product cost and period cost. Product cost would include all the costs necessary in the manufacture of production units, assuming that the company is a manufacturing one. <coughs> this would include direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. So, according to function, cost can be product or period cost. Product cost would include the cost necessary for the manufacture of the units of finished goods, direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Period costs, on the other hand, are the costs that are not incurred in relation to manufacturing such as selling expenses and general administrative expenses. These kind of expenses are said to be period costs because they are expense in the same period in which they are incurred. So product costs are the costs that are pertaining to the manufacture of the finished goods item. Period costs for everything else. The sum of all direct materials and direct labor are direct costs. We call them the prime costs, DM and DL combined. Then DL and manuf overhead are what we incur in order to convert materials to finished goods. So labor and overhead combined, we call them the conversion costs. Again, because labor and overhead are the costs that we incur to convert DM to finish goods. Costs that are not direct are obviously indirect costs. So manufacturing overhead and the selling and general admin expenses are said to be indirect costs. Now, for purposes of preparing the financial statements, the standards would prescribe the use of what we call absorption costing. Okay? Absorption costing. This is the prescribed presentation, Presi prescribed costing used for the presentation of items in the income statement to comply with IFRS. That is for external reporting. We call this absorption costing. Now, here is the deal. I want you to imagine a scenario where you expect to sell 10,000 units. Okay, 10,000 units. 
Now, the selling price is 20. Direct materials, 4. Direct labor, 4. Variable manuf overhead is 4. Fixed manuf overhead is 20,000. Commission 3 and fixed admin expenses, 10,000 pesos. This is the scenario. Now, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of the product manager. The product manager of this product line. Whatever this may be. Say this product line, you are in charge of the entirety of the product line. So, let's say call this product X, for example. Okay, you are in charge of the manufacture and sale of product X. Now, here's the thing. What if we prepare income statements? The company uses absorption costing in preparing the income statements to evaluate us as a manager of this product line. So again, we are the manager of this product line. I want you to imagine that they are requiring us, that they are, they are evaluating us rather based on absorption costing income statements. Now, in absorption costing, remember that we classify costs based on function. So you have sales minus cost of goods sold, where all the product costs are going to be deducted, giving you gross profit. And then gross profit minus the selling and admin expenses, that will give you operating profit. That's how absorption costing works. Okay? So again, you expect to sell 10,000 units with these figures in mind. You are to prepare what your expected income statement would look like. Assuming that, assuming that you will produce 10,000 units. So this is number one in your handout. Assuming that you will produce 10,000 units. So, prepare an income statement. Assuming you'll produce 10,000 units. Go. Okay, you may want to pause this video as you are preparing the income statement. Okay, after preparing the income statement, so please play back the video. So when we prepare an income statement using absorption costing, what we do is we start with the sales revenue, 20 pesos times 10,000. Your revenues is 200,000. Again, under the assumption that you'll produce 10,000 units and you will sell 10,000 units as well, the revenue will be based on the sales units 10K. 20 times 10,000, you have 200,000 pesos. Cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold includes all the product costs, which includes DMDL, variable manuf overhead, as well as fixed manuf overhead. So, how are we going to arrive at the per unit fixed manuf overhead? So, this is the total, 20,000 pesos, divided by the production of 10,000 units. We allocate the fixed overhead over the 10,000 units produced. So, you would have 4 plus 4 plus 4. 20,000 divided by 10K, that's 2 pesos. So 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2, that would give you 14. 14 times 10,000 pesos, there you go, 140,000 pesos. Again, you have 140,000 pesos. That is your cost of goods sold. Gross profit, 200K minus 140K is 60K. Then you have... Your selling and admin expenses, which includes the commission and the fixed admin expenses. So you have commissions 3 times 10,000 units based on the number of units sold. Then you have your fixed admin 10,000. 
60k minus 30k minus 10k, you have 20,000 in profit. Okay? You have 20,000 in profit. Now, you are expected to generate a profit of 20,000 pesos. However, remember that you are the product lines manager for this item. Let us say that you are pressured to show a better profit for the reason that you're expecting a promotion. You want to receive a promo you want to receive a large bonus at your end or maybe you are in line for the next position that is to be promoted to a higher level of manager. Now, what be, what basically you can do is to increase your sales revenue in order to increase profit or you're going to control cost. That is, you're going to minimize cost as much as possible. So it's either you increase sales or you minimize your cost and expenses. Now, let us say that these two options are not possible. That is, the demand is limited to 10,000 units only. And then the expenses are as is. You cannot change them anymore. So, the tendency for you is to do some accounting trickery or accounting magic for the sake of showing a good profit, a better amount of profit. And that is what is the problem with absorption costing is. Actually, managers can manipulate showing higher profits without actually controlling costs or generating added revenue. Product line managers can do this, that is increasing profit without any substantial operational changes by simply producing more units. So go back to your handout. Okay, assumption number two. What if you're going to produce 10, instead of 10K, 20,000 units? What if you'll produce 20,000 units? How will your income statement look like? I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Okay. So, I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Since this is a recorded video, you may pause this as you are preparing the income statement. Please make sure, okay? Please make sure that you are indeed preparing the income statement under assumption 2. You use absorption costing in preparing the FS, assuming you produce 20,000 units. Okay? You may pause this video. If you are not yet done. So what will happen if we produce 20,000 units instead of 10,000 units? Again, there's nothing we can do about the sales. We are limited to 10,000 units sold only. So what will happen here is your sales revenue is still 20 times 10,000, 200,000 pesos. Now, what about your cost of goods sold this time. Your DM, DL, and VMOH are expected to remain the same at 4 pesos each line item. So that's 4 plus 4 plus 4. But the fixed manufacturing overhead will be distributed among 20,000 units. 20K divided by 20K, the FOH per unit is only 1 peso. 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus only 1 peso for fixed overhead. Your cost of goods sold is only 13 times 10,000, 130,000 only. This would lead to a gross profit of 70,000 pesos. Next, let us deduct the commissions. 3 pesos per unit sold times 10k, 30,000. Fixed admin is at 10,000. And operating profit will be 30,000 this time. Note that by producing more units 
instead of 10K, you produce 20,000 units this time, your profit has increased from 20,000 to 30,000 even if you just sold the same number of units. So what kind of sorcery is this? What happened in this presentation of the income statement? Why is it that you simply produce more units, the profit went up even though you did not sell more units? What kind of accounting trickery is this? Well, so that you know what happens, I think it is obvious for some of you, because you distributed the fixed overhead costs among more units, you only sold 10,000, you produced 20K. 10,000 of the units were left in inventory. So the fixed overhead pertaining to those 10,000 units left in inventory is not yet expense as cost of goods sold. So what happened here was that your fixed overhead incurred is still 20,000, but 10,000 of that is not yet reflected in your cost of goods sold. It was left in your ending finished goods inventory. So again, what happened here? You, as the product line manager, has produced more units without selling more. You're able to increase the profit. This is not a real increase in profit. This is only an accounting trickery. We call this phantom profits. What is this phantom profits? Well, basically, you can increase your reported profits by producing more and more. Even though you are not selling more, your revenues are just the same. The amount of cost incurred is just the same. You're able to create added profits. No? You increase your reported profits. We call that phantom profits without real or substantive change in your operations. Wala naman talagang nangyaring pagbabago sa benta mo, sa cost incurred mo. Hindi mo naman ginalingan sa pagbenta o ginalingan sa pagkontrol ng cost. Talagang mas marami ka lang na produce na delay yung pag-expense ng fixed overhead. Dinamihan mo kasi ang production. So ano nangyari dyan? Na-spread out yung fixed overhead sa mas maraming units. So yung mga units hindi na benta, yung fixed overhead nila hindi pa nasama sa cost of goods sold. Yung fixed overhead na iwan sa ending finished goods inventory. In this case, 10K was sold. The remaining 10K, because you produce 20K, no? The remaining 10K was left in inventory. Now, what is the problem with this one? This will create behavioral implications that are not helpful to the company. Hindi ito nakakatulong sa kumpanya. What will be the behavioral implications of this one? Well, the tendency is that when we evaluate managers based on profit calculated using absorption costing, they will be motivated to keep on producing and producing more for the sake of increasing profits. Now, tayo bilang product line manager, gusto natin pa-impress sa boss. No? Gusto, tayo, gusto natin magpa-impress sa boss. Mag-produce lang tayo ng mag-produce kahit hindi naman talaga tayo nakakabenta. No? Hindi naman talaga tayo nakakadagdag ng benta para maipakita na tumaas yung profit natin. Yun yung pangit doon. Bakit pangit yan? Naalala nyo yung discussion natin sa JIT. No? Keeping inventory is a waste of resources. According to just-in-time philosophy, keeping inventory can cause us high waste of resources. Because we are producing and producing more units without selling them immediately, our inventory would increase. We would require a larger storage, increasing our storage costs. The more units at hand, the greater the chance of spoilage. Pwedeng masira yung units dahil hindi natin nabibenta agad. Gumastos na tayo sa storage, nasira pa yung inventory natin. What else? The chance that it will become obsolete, malaos yung production units natin. Hindi na mabenta kasi sobra yung na-produce natin tapos hindi na uso. 
So, inventory is actually, or keeping inventory, no? carrying inventory, actually incurs a lot of cost. The problem with absorption costing, when used for internal decision-making, when we evaluate managers, is that it will motivate those product line managers to keep on producing even if they cannot sell the items. Now, what can we do in order to stop this? No? What can we do in order to stop this? I want you to take note that absorption costing is required only for external financial reporting when we prepare the FS. Remember that in management accounting, when we prepare reports to be used inside of the company, the standards are not binding. We can violate the reporting standards used for external reporting if the reports are prepared for internal use only. So, in order to prevent this problem from happening, that is, the problem is managers keep on producing and producing without actually being able to sell them, is for us to use an alternative to absorption costing. We call this variable costing. While variable costing has its, has its own flaws and limitations, variable costing can deal with the issue at hand. Yung excess production, kasi yung manager gusto lang mag-produce para tumaas yung profit. Variable costing can help us um, remove that kind of motivation. No? Para iwasan yung excess production, pwede tayo tulungan ni variable costing. Now, let us say for the given problem, we are going to use variable costing. What does it mean? When we use variable costing, we have to make sure that the manufacturing overhead is separated into variable manufacturing overhead and fixed manufacturing overhead. Nakahiwalay ang variable tsaka fix. No? Magkahiwalay ang variable at fix. And the variable overhead will be treated as is a product cost. Fixed manufacturing overhead, on the other hand, will be treated just like the other expenses. That is, it will be treated like a period cost. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin kay fixed man of overhead, tratuhin natin siya na para siyang isang fix, uh, para siyang isang period cost. Ine-expense natin kaagad pagka-incur. Okay? Sige nga. Let's go to item 3. You expect to sell 10,000 units and you will produce 10,000 units. This time use variable costing. Prepare an income statement using variable costing assuming you uh, assuming you will produce 10,000 units. Go. Make sure to prepare the income statement. If you haven't prepared yet, uh, you can pause to give you more time. Okay, game tayo. Sige nga. So, when we prepare an income statement using absorb, uh, variable costing this time, our sales revenue will still be the same. 20 times 10,000, you have 200,000 pesos. Deduct the cost of goods sold. Okay. In the actual variable costing presentation, there is no cost of goods sold. However, I'm going to use terms in the meantime that are comparable to absorption costing. Ulitin ko ha, itong ginagawa ko ngayon na presentation, hindi ito yung tamang presentation ng variable costing. Ipapakita ko lang sa inyo yung presentation na to 
para maunawaan ninyo kung ano yung pinagkaiba ni absorption at variable costing. So under variable costing, only DMDL and VOH are treated as product costs. So the amounts that would go to inventory and then cost of goods sold would be 4 plus 4 plus 4, that would be 12. 12 times 10,000, you have 120,000. Okay ba? Fixed overhead is not treated as a product cost. Okay? So, 120K cost of goods sold consisting solely of the variable manufacturing cost. Variable man of cost lang. 200 minus 120. Gross profit is 80,000. As for your selling and admin expenses, variable selling expense is the commission. 3 times 10,000 units. 30,000 pesos. And then, your fixed costs that are to be expensed in the period would constitute both the fixed overhead and the fixed admin expenses. So again, the fixed manufacturing overhead is combined with the other period cost. We expense the entire amount in the same period. 80K minus 30K minus 30K, your operating profit would be 20,000 pesos. Your operating profit would be 20,000 pesos. Okay? Now, anong ginawa natin kanina sa absorption costing? Dinaya natin ang sistema. Nagpakita tayo ng mas mataas na profit. Paano? Dinamihan lang natin yung production. What we did a while ago in absorption costing is we produced more and showed a higher profit. Subukan nga natin dito sa variable costing. Let us try doing the same technique here in variable costing. Let us see if we can do the same technique. No? Mag-produce tayo ng mas marami, tataas yung profit. So, if we will produce 20,000 units, what will be our operating profit? Again, I'll give you some time. If you need more time, please pause this video. Make sure to prepare it by yourself. Prepare a variable costing income statement assuming you produce 20,000 units. Okay, please prepare your income statement. Assuming we produce 20,000 units, but our sales is limited only to 10,000 units still. Your sales revenue would still be the same, 20 times 10K, 200,000. Cost of goods sold would constitute DM, DL, VOH, so 4 plus 4 plus 4, that would give you 12. 12 times 10,000, you have 120,000 pesos. Gross profit is 80,000 pesos. There you go. We have the following period cost. Commission still at 3 times 10K, 30,000 pesos. And then your fixed manufacturing overhead and admin, they will be expensed in the same period. So, anong nangyari dito? Kahit mag-produce tayo ng 20,000 units, kapag gumagamit tayo ng variable costing, yung fixed man of overhead, buo natin ina-expense sa period. Hindi natin ina-allocate muna sa product, no? ina-allocate natin sa inventory, tapos hintayin natin mabenta. Hindi. Dito sa variable costing, kung ano yung buong fixed man of overhead na na-incur, yun din yung i-expense the same period. So, 80K minus 30K minus 30K, our profit is still 
20,000 pesos. So even if we produce more, in absorption costing, when we do that, our profit reported, no? reported profits will increase. Here in variable costing, there will be no change in the operating profit. If you produce 10K, profit will be 20,000. If you produce 20K, profit will still be 20,000. In other words, wala kang magawa, no? Para mandaya. So, walang daya dito. You cannot fool your boss into thinking that you have a higher profit to increase your bonus. So, that's the significance of variable costing. It will not it will not motivate the managers to keep on producing excessively. Diba? So, hindi mo magawa ng paraan na mag-produce ka lang ng marami, tataas automatic yung profit mo. Hindi yan nangyayari sa variable costing. So, that's the significance, no? Again, that's the significance of variable costing. Ayaw naman talaga natin na yung mga manager nagpo-produce ng maraming inventory. So, para maiwasan yung yung style nila, no? Style nila na bulok, di ba? Para maiwasan yung style nila. Why not for internal use, gumamit tayo ng variable costing? Why? If we do that, no? If we do that, there is no leeway of manipulating the profit, no? Again, by increasing production excessively. Okay? So, that's the significance of variable costing. So, at the end of this first problem, there are two things that I want you to impress in your mind. Number one is the significance of variable costing. How it can help us in our internal evaluation of product line managers. And number two, you're able to know the difference in how cost items are treated under the two. Particularly the fixed manufacturing overhead. Okay? Now that you're able to understand that, now that you're able to uh, prepare, no? now that you're able to see the demonstration, I want you to answer the following questions. Okay. Ayan. No? So, let me read the problem first. This is your second problem. At the end of Acosta Corp's first year of operations, it was able to produce a total of 10,000 gallons of chemical X, a highly poisonous liquid. Out of this production, only 8,000 gallons were sold. The ingredients to produce each gallon of chemical X cost 250 per gallon. Direct labor per gallon cost 150. Man of overhead per unit, variable and fix are 0.50 and 2 respectively. Variable selling expense per unit is at 0.4. Fixed expenses total 6,000 for the year ended. And the sales price per gallon is 10 pesos. So under assumption A, you are to prepare the absorption costing and variable costing income statements under this scenario. No? And tell me the difference in operating income. Assumption boy, the same facts except that 10,000 gallons are sold, no? So, yung na-produce, 10,000. Yung na-benta ay 10,000 din. Ayan. No? So, 10,000 gallons of chemical X are sold. The same number of gallons that were produced. Okay? Sa main assumption kasi, 8,000 lang yung na-benta, no? 8,000 gallons were sold. In assumption B, what if 10,000 gallons were sold? Assumption C, same facts, except that this time, it's not the first year of operations. So, meron kang na-produce last year. 11,000 gallons of chemical X were sold. Okay? So, I will give you some time to do assumption A first. Okay, you may pause this video if you need to. Please make sure that you prepare both absorption costing and variable costing income statements. And determine the difference in the operating income. Okay? So, if you would need more time, you can no? you can pause this video. Anyway, so please begin.
Okay, let's just focus on item letter A first. Again, that's the absorption costing and variable costing income statements. So again, 10,000 gallons were produced. Only 8,000 gallons were sold. Okay? So what's the price? The price is given 10 pesos. The costs are 250 direct materials, 150 for direct labor. Variable overhead is 0.5. Fixed overhead is 2. Variable selling expense 0.4 and fixed expense in total is 6,000 for the year ended. Okay, game. So let us answer this one. So, 8,000 units sold. Under absorption costing, the sales revenue would be 10 pesos the price times 8,000. You would have 80,000 pesos. Okay? You would have 80,000 pesos revenue. Under absorption costing, you would combine the DMDL and VOH and FOH. So, 250 plus 150 plus 0.5 plus 2, that's a total of 650 per unit. 650 times 8,000, cost of goods sold is 52,000 pesos. Cost of goods sold is 52,000 pesos. Gross profit is therefore 28,000 pesos. Okay, variable selling and admin expenses is at 0 0.4. 0 0.4 times 8,000 units is 3,2. Then your fixed admin expenses is at 6,000 pesos. So if you are going to prepare an income statement using absorption costing, the reported profit would be 18,800. Okay? 18,800. That's the reported profit under absorption costing. Okay. Now, what if we're going to prepare the income statement using variable costing? Paano naman ngayon kapag variable costing yung ating gagamitin? Ano ang magiging itsura ng ating income statement? So the revenues would still be the same. 10 times 8,000, 80,000 pesos. As for the cost of goods sold, hindi kasama ang FOH na 2 per unit. What will form part of your inventory and therefore will go to cost of goods sold will only be 450 per unit. So 450 times 8,000, you have 36,000 pesos. 80K minus 36K is gross profit of 44,000 pesos. Now, your variable selling and admin expenses will be deducted next at point four. 0.4 times 8,000 units is 3,200. And then your fixed costs would be a combination of the 6,000 fixed admin and the fixed overhead. How do we arrive at the total fixed overhead incurred? Now, if you are going to calculate the FOH rate, in other words, FOH per unit, you basically take the total FOH cost, no? the total FOH cost, ayan, no? total FOH cost, and divide that by the total production budgeted. No? Total production budgeted. We were able to arrive at an FOH per unit of 2 pesos. No? Yun yung given sa atin. No? The FOH per unit is given at 2 pesos per unit. So, Kapag 2 pesos per unit yung FOH natin, tapos yung production, hindi naman sinabi na yung budgeted at actual ay magkaiba. Yung total production daw natin ay 10,000 units. No? 10,000 units. Magkano ang total FOH? No? Magkano yung total FOH? Ayan. Pwede natin i-work back kung magkano yung total FOH. So sa problem na to, wala pa namang kinaibahan yung actual tsaka budgeted. So kung ano yung actual production, assume natin yan din yung budgeted production. We got an FOH per unit of 2. 
magkano kaya ang total FOH? No? Kung 2 pesos yung FOH per unit, magkano kaya ang total FOH? Tapos 10,000 units yung production. No? 10,000 units yung production. So, ayan, ha? So, we can work back that we would have 20,000. Ayan, no? 20,000. Yung ating total FOH. 20,000 yung ating total FOH. Ayan. So, if we are going to deduct the total fixed cost, it will not only be the 6,000 pesos fixed selling and admin expense, it will also include the fixed manufacturing overhead of 20,000 pesos. Ayan. So, FMOH, 20,000. Fixed selling and admin cost, 6,000 pesos. Okay? Paano natin nakuha yung fixed overhead? Napa-work back natin. 10,000 units daw yung production, sabi ng main problem, no? Sabi ng uh, case, 10,000 units yung production. 2 yung FOH per unit. E di masasabi natin, yung total FOH nasa 20,000. No? So, 20,000 yung FOH. Yung buong 20,000 na yan, ide-deduct sa pag-arrive ng profit. No? Under variable costing, the entire FOH will be deducted in arriving at operating profit. 44K minus 3,200 minus 20,000 minus 6,000. The operating profit would be 14,800. This is the reported profit under variable costing. Magbubura lang ako ha. Ayan, binura ko lang yung scratch ko dito, no? So, paano natin nakuha yung 20,000 na total FOH incurred during the period? Now, again, 10,000 units produced, 8,000 units lang yung sold, no? 8,000 units yung sold. What happened to our operating profit? We can note that the operating profit under absorption costing is greater than that of the variable costing. By how much? 18,800 versus 14,800. That's a difference of 4,000. No? A difference of 4,000 pesos. Okay? So, kung titingnan nyo yung difference nila, 18,800 tsaka 14,800, 4,000 pesos. Mas malaki yung sa absorption costing. Okay? So, those are the findings no under assumption A. This time, I want you to answer assumption B and assumption C. So, 10,000 units produced. Sa assumption B, 10K, lahat yun na benta. Sa assumption C, meron tayong na-produce pa last year. Hindi natin first time na yun. Mas marami tayong na-benta. 11,000 units. I'll give you some time to answer B and C.
Okay. So, let us now answer assumption letter B, as in boy. So, if you need to, you may pause your pause this video if you need more time to do it. Okay? So, assumption B, this time, we are to assume 10,000 units are to be sold. Same facts in the main case, except that this time, 10,000 gallons of chemical X were sold. Prepare both absorption and variable costing income statements. Determine the difference in income. So, under absorption costing, a sales revenue would be 10 times 10,000. That's 100,000 pesos. Cost of goods sold would be 650 times 10,000, 65,000 pesos. Gross profit will be 35,000. Variable selling and admin expense of 0.4 per unit will be multiplied by 10,000 units, 4,000 pesos. Fixed selling and admin expenses, 6,000 pesos. Operating profit under absorption costing would be 25,000 pesos. Under variable costing, we would have the following. Sales revenue, the same. 10 times 10,000, 100,000. But the cost of goods sold will only be 450 per unit. 450 times 10K, 45,000. Again, the 2 peso difference between absorption costing and variable costing cost of goods sold is due to the fact that in variable costing, the FOH per unit, in this case, 2 pesos, no? 2 pesos yung FOH per unit, it will be expensed immediately. Hindi na siya dadaan sa cost of goods sold. Ulitin ko ha, yung format ng variable costing na ginagamit ko dito, hindi ito yung tamang format. Pinapakita ko lang ng ganito para makompare ninyo sa absorption costing. Maya-maya ipakita ko sa inyo yung tamang forma ng variable costing. Gross profit under variable costing is 55,000. So you are going to deduct the variable selling and admin expense, 0.4 times 10,000 units is 4,000. Again, the entire fixed manuf overhead of 20,000 pesos. No? Na-calculate natin yan kanina. Yan yung amount incurred sa fixed overhead will be deducted. No? This will be deducted from the gross profit. No? Entirely. Tapos yung fixed selling and admin expense na 6,000, ide-deduct din. 55K minus 4K minus 20K minus 6K. The operating profit under variable costing is also 25,000 pesos. So note that in this scenario, scenario boy, no, item boy tayo ha, the operating profit for both absorption costing and variable costing are just the same. Ayan, zero difference in profit. No? Zero difference in profit. Equal, no? Binaliktad ko lang na equal, no? Verticals, <laughs> vertical na equal yan, no? 25,000 is equal to 25,000. So, under scenario boy, 10,000 units produce, same number of units sold. Absorption costing income and variable costing income are just the same. Let's now go to scenario C. No? Scenario C, 10,000 units are produced. But 11,000 units were sold. May mga nabenta galing last year. No? May mga nabenta pa na galing last year. Okay? Ah, sige. Game tayo dito. What would be your absorption costing income? Sales revenue. 10 will be multiplied by 11,000. 110,000. 
Cost of goods sold, 650 times 11,000 this time. 71,500. Gross profit will be 38,500. Variable selling and admin expenses, 0. 0.4. This time multiplied by 11,000 units, that's 4,400. Then you have your fixed selling and admin expense at 6,000 pesos. Operating profit will be 28,100. No? Operating profit will be 28,100. Okay? What about in variable costing? Sales revenue is the same. 10 times 11K, also 110,000. But your cost of goods sold would exclude the 2 pesos FOH. So 450 times 11,000, 49,500. Hence, you have a gross profit of 60,500. Again, gross profit, 60,500. Variable selling and admin expense is 0.4. 0.4 times 11K is 4,400. Fixed selling and admin expenses is 6,000. And then yung buong FMOH of 20,000 pesos will be deducted as well. So wala nang ina-allocate sa production units at maging COGS. No? Yung buong 20,000 within the same period i-expense. Okay, dahil 20,000 lang yung in-expense. Yung absorption costing kasi meron mga fixed cost na galing last year, no? na damay this year. Ito, puro lang to this year. No? Notice that the operating profit will be higher for variable costing at 30,100. Okay? So if you did it right, absorption costing profit would be 28,100. Variable costing profit would be 30,100 under the 11,000 units sold assumption. So, the operating profit will be greater for variable costing by 2,000 pesos. No? By 2,000 pesos. Okay. Now, assuming that the cost figures last year and this year are the same, no? yung cost per unit ng variable, tsaka yung production, tsaka yung total fixed cost, the same this year and last year, we can make reconciliation uh, shortcuts. No? Reconciliation shortcuts. So profit is also called income. No? Profit is also called income. In economics, we denote profit with Y. The difference in income or Y, no? the difference in income or profit, that's Y, is equal to the production units minus sales units multiplied by the FOH rate. No? How do you arrive at the difference in income? You are going to take the difference between production units and sales units and then multiply such by the FOH per unit. In our case, the FOH rate is 2 pesos per unit. Again, in our case, the FOH rate is 2 pesos per unit. So, Scenario A, 10,000 units produced, 8,000 units sold. So, 10K minus 8K, 10,000 units produced. Scenario A, 8,000 units sold. 2,000 yung difference nila. Multiplied by the FOH rate of 2 pesos. So, 2,000 times 2, we have 4,000 pesos difference. Tama? Okay, 4,000 pesos. Scenario A, 10K minus 8K, that's 2K times 2, the FOH rate, 4,000 pesos. Tama naman, no? Scenario B, madali lang to sa scenario B. Okay, ano nangyari dito sa scenario boy? The number of units sold and produced are the same. So, 10K minus 10K is 0. 0 times 2, your difference in income would also be 0. The difference in income will also be 0. No? So again, 10K minus 10K, that's 0 times 2. 0 or equal. No? Equal yung kanilang profit. Scenario C, the number of units produced again is still 10K, pero 11K yung nabenta. So 10K minus 11K is 1K. No? 1K times 2, 
the difference in profit is 2,000 pesos. No? 1,000 yung difference ng production and sales. Multiplied by 2, no? 1,000 times 2 is 2,000 pesos. Okay? Now, question. Paano natin malaman kung sino mas mataas? Mas mataas ba yung absorption income or yung variable income? Okay. Yung shortcut natin dyan ay PS, I love you. Okay? Ang shortcut natin dyan ay PS, I love you. So, if your absorption, if your production is greater than sales, absorption income will be greater than variable income. Na? PS, I love you. Production is greater than sales. Absorption income is greater than variable income. So, titingnan nyo dito, di ba? Sa scenario A, production 10K, sales ay 10K, ah, 8K, no? sales ay 8K. Production is greater than sales. It would follow that your absorption income is greater than the variable income. Obviously, if production is less than sales, absorption income is less than variable income. As you can see in scenario C, mas marami na benta, so production is less than sales. So absorption income would be less than variable income by 2K in scenario C. And obviously in scenario boy, if production is equal to sales, absorption income is equal to variable income. Again, PS, I love you. No? Absorption income, yan yung I. Variable income, pilitin nyo maging love you yan, no? So, P-S, A-Y, V-Y. If P is greater than S, I is greater than love you. P is less than S, I is less than love you. P is equal to S, I is equal to love you. Okay? So, that is it, no? For our problem number two. So, let us now go to problem three. Puntahan naman natin si problem 3. I'll give you a few minutes for this one. Go! Okay, so just answer, no, just answer. If you need more time, you can pause this video. If you need more time, you can just pause this video, okay? Ayan. So please answer. If you need more time, just post. No? Just post this video. During January 2015, Alinab Company produced and sold 1,000 units of product A with cost as follows. So your materials are at 6,000 pesos, labor 3,000 pesos, VOH 2,500, FOH 1,500. The total manufacturing cost would be 13,000 pesos. Selling and admin costs incurred during the month were variable selling and admin 3,000, fixed selling and admin 2,000 for a total of 5,000 pesos. Okay, game tayo, ha? Huh? Game tayo. Number one, what would be the product cost per unit under absorption costing? What will be your product cost per unit under absorption costing? Under absorption costing, all costs of manufacturing would form part of your product cost. So, 
materials, labor, VOH, and FOH, the entire 13,000 will be part of your product cost. Divide this by 1,000 units, you would have 13 pesos. No? 13 pesos. Next, what if we are using variable costing? Ano ang magiging product cost natin per unit kapag gumagamit tayo ng variable costing? So, we are going to collate materials, labor, VOH only. We will exclude fixed factory overhead. Pag sinabi natin product cost, yan yung pumapasok sa inventory. So, the answer for number 2 will only be 6K, 3K, 2, 5. 11,500 lang yan, no? Divided by 1,000, that is 11,50. Number 2, the answer is 11,50. Again, number 2, the answer is 11,50. The product cost per unit under variable costing is 11,50. Now, number 3, cost of goods sold per unit. Kapag silent yung problem at tinatanong yung cost of goods sold, ang tinutukoy niya, absorption costing. Yung concept ng cost of goods sold, relevant yan sa absorption costing. Kung meron man akong pinapakitang COGS sa variable costing, that is just to compare with absorption costing. So ulitin ko ha, kapag yung COGS natin silent, COGS per unit, yan yung product cost pa rin under absorption costing. So, the entire 13K will form part of your product cost. When sold, they will become cost of goods sold. So, number 3 is just like number 1, 13 pesos. No? Number 3 is just like number 1. The answer is 13 pesos. Okay? Let us now go to number 4. Let's now go to number 4. So, the correct format in the preparation of income statement for variable costing is the contribution margin format where we are going to divide cost into its variable and fixed component. Ito talaga yung tamang format para sa variable costing. Sales revenue minus variable cost, contribution margin, minus fixed cost, that will give you operating profit. Sales revenue minus variable cost, contribution margin. Contribution margin minus fixed cost, this would give you operating profit. Ayan. No? Yan talaga yung tamang format. No? Yan talaga yung tamang format sa variable costing. So number four, this is more relevant for variable costing. The variable cost per unit, which will be deducted from the sales price in arriving at the unit's contribution margin, it would literally include all of the variable costs. Material 6K, labor 3K, VOH 2.5, variable selling and admin 3K. So that's 14,500 divided by 1,000. The total variable cost per unit is 1450 the total variable cost per unit is 1450 number 4 that is the answer number 4 that is the answer 1450 okay na so these are the answers for the alinab company problem next problem I'll give you around 3 to 5 minutes. No? I'll give you 3 to 5 minutes to answer this one. Okay. So, if I will start answering, uh, just pause the video. No? Make sure that you are always answering before I discuss the solution. No? Make sure that you answer. No? You definitely answer before I discuss the solution. So, for Angeles Corporation, I'll give you three minutes no if you need more time feel free to pause no feel free feel free to pause this recording
a gate. Are you ready? I hope everyone is ready. The following information pertains to Angeles Corporation. Beginning inventory is 2,000 units. Ending inventory is 5,000 units. Direct labor per unit is 10. Direct materials per unit is 8. VOH per unit 2. FOH per unit is 5. Variable selling cost per unit is 6. Fixed selling cost per unit is 8. A. What's the value of ending inventory using absorption costing method? So, the ending inventory in units is 5,000. Under absorption costing, DM8, DL10, VOH2, and FOH5 are all part of the product cost. So, 5,000 units should be multiplied by 25 pesos. That's 8 plus 10 plus 2 plus 5, 25 pesos. 125,000 pesos. Let's go to letter boy, B as in boy. What is the value of the ending inventory using variable costing method? Under variable costing method, we will exclude the fixed overhead per unit of 5. 8 plus 10 plus 2 is only 20. 5,000 units times 20, you would have 100,000 pesos. Okay? 5,000 units times 20, you would have 100,000 pesos. Okay. So, let's now go to letter C. What's the difference in the amount of operating profit between absorption costing and variable costing? As discussed in the, in the previous problem, the one before the last one, we can arrive at the difference in income by taking the difference between production units and sales units. Multiply such by the FOH per unit. Multiply such by the FOH per unit. So, production units minus sales units. Hindi naman binigay yung production tsaka sales natin. So, paano natin makuha yan? No? Wala namang binigay production tsaka sales. Well, the fact that your ending inventory increased relative to the beginning inventory, it's higher by 3,000, it simply means that your production exceeded sales by 3,000 units. Ulitin ko ha, yung ending inventory mo na 5K, mas mataas kesa sa beginning na 2K. In short, nadagdagan ng 3K. Kung nadagdagan tayo ng inventory, ibig sabihin nun, mas malaki yung production kesa sa sales. And the difference is, the difference between production and sales, no? The difference in ending and beginning inventory is the same as the difference in production and sales units. So, 3,000 times the FOH rate of 5. So, 3,000 times 5. The difference in income must be 15,000 pesos. So, production is greater than sales. I is greater than love you. Mas mataas yung absorption costing income kesa sa variable costing income. So, these are the answers for Angeles Corporation. A, 125,000 pesos. B, 100,000 pesos. And C, 15,000 pesos. Okay tayo, ha? Okay, now, before going to the next problem in the handout, okay, skip one na. Skip that one. Go to the last one. Okay? Okay, skip one problem. And go to ABC Company. So, I'll give you around 5 minutes. Okay, to answer at least items 1 and 2. No, at least items 1 and 2. I'll give you 5 minutes.
Okay. So I think that would be enough time. Again, pause nyo lang ha. Just pause this recording. No? Just pause this recording sakali naman na kailangan nyo pa ng mas maraming time. No? So moving forward, ganun lang gagawin nyo ha. I'm going to answer once uh, I flash the screen. And then if I ask you to answer, please do answer before, no? Before I, before I, uh, before you're going to play the solution. Okay na? Oh, sige. So, ABC Company, a new company, planned and actual production 200K. Wala pang difference si plan tsaka actual. That's 200,000 units. Sales is at 48,000 per unit. 170,000 units were sold during the year. So, note that planned and actual production are the same. There were no variances during the period. I think that would be sufficient to answer question number one, or requirement number one. Determine the number of units in the ending finished goods inventory. Because this is a new company, there is no beginning inventory. The fact that you produced 200,000 and sold 170,000 means 200k minus 170k, 30,000 units of finished goods inventory were left at the end of the period. No? Nasa 30,000 yung units ng inventory. So, walang beginning ha? Walang beginning inventory kasi new company to. Production, 200k. Sales, 170k. So, 200k minus 170k, you have 30,000 units. Okay? Next. What about number two? Calculate the cost of the ending finished goods inventory under variable costing and absorption costing. Under variable costing and then under absorption costing. Calculate the cost of the ending finished goods inventory. So, 30,000 units is the ending finished goods inventory. But what is the cost? Dito kay variable costing, the entire 18, uh, the entire 18 pesos variable man of cost is the only inventoriable cost. No? So, anong inventoriable cost? Itong 18 lang. If we use variable costing, the answer is 18 multiplied by 30,000. Tama? 18 multiplied by 30,000. No, tama na, no? Okay. So, if you're going to multiply 18 by 30,000, the answer is 540,000 pesos. Yun yung sa variable costing, no? So, only the variable man of cost would enter inventory. 18 multiplied by 30K is 540,000. Okay, what about under absorption costing? Isasama natin yung fixed man of cost. So, this 840K should be divided by the number of units in production. No? 840K divided by the number of units in production, which is 200K. Pag dinivide natin yan sa 200, the cost per unit is 420. So, 420 plus 18... When you add this, 18 plus 420, this would give you 22.2 per unit. So, 22.2 per unit multiplied by 30,000. Yan, itong 22.2 multiplied by 30,000 units. The absorption costing inventory is, ayan, 666,000. Tama? 22.2 times 30K is 666,000. This would be your finished goods inventory value under absorption costing. Okay? Under absorption costing. Okay? Next, answer items 3 and 4. No? Please answer items 3 and 4. Determine the company's variable costing income and then determine the company's absorption costing income. Okay, I'll give you around 3 minutes for this one.
Okay, so I think I'm going to end. Okay, para hindi tayo mabitin, no? I'm going to end the first portion of this lecture. This is part 1 of 2. Okay, part 1 of 2 for absorption and variable costing. So what will happen is I'm going to give you a second recording, no? A second recording after this one where we are going to finish this problem. So in the meantime, we take note nyo, ha? Finished goods inventory na ito, 30,000 units. So, the ending finished goods inventory under variable costing is only 540k. Under absorption costing, 666,000. Take note that the inventory value under absorption costing will always be greater than variable costing if there is fixed overhead. Eh, malamang, no? So, variable costing, yung fixed overhead, hindi naman yan kasama. No? Okay, so I'm going to end this recording. Okay, by the time you're going to you're going to open the second recording, please make sure you're able to prepare the income statement under both variable costing and absorption costing for this problem. Okay, see you in the next recording.